Sure. All right, so we're now recording as well, you guys. So look, Chipper, um, we're all on here. Um, anyhow, very excited to do this because, as I just mentioned, we all just got back from Super Saturday. Absolutely love Super Saturday, and I know as you know, as market council members, sometimes Super Saturday becomes like this, like mind blowing, like so many details, you know, so many, you know, checklist things to do. And you feel a great responsibility on your shoulders to make sure that, um, you know, that it's organized, that we get people there. Once people are there, we want to create a very rewarding experience for them. And, you know, what do people think of it? And, you know, did we, did we do a good job? And so I, I understand and appreciate as someone who has had to organize um, a lot of events throughout my career, the stressful, uh, you know, experience that it is to put on an event, to host an event, and just to make sure that everything's in place. And if the doggone AV doesn't go out at least once per, you know, uh, meeting that hasn't been a real meeting, I mean, all of those things, you know, come into play. And so first and foremost, uh, as a team here, we just want to thank you guys yes. um, for what you do, for putting these on, for, you know, we know that you do this out of the goodness of your hearts, that it's a volunteer thing, you do it to make an impact, you do it to contribute uh, to Beachbody, to your teams, to the local coaches in your areas. It's just an awesome, awesome things. And, and I do want to tell you how much um, Super Saturdays truly make an impact in our business again sometimes as the event coordinator you lose sight of the you know of the, of the purpose or maybe the objective behind you know what it does and there's no question for me as i have an opportunity you know to sometimes kind of sit back and observe it from um you know from a an objective point of view from a, a high level point of view to see what super saturdays and and just live events what they really do for our business there is truly no substitute for a live event. When you have an opportunity to bring coaches together and rub shoulders and interact together and be in the same room with like-minded people who are excited, who are eager, who have you know the same insecurities as you, who have gone through some of the same challenges you who, that you have, who have the same vision as you have to take things forward, that you can't, you can't duplicate that through Zoom. You can't duplicate that through a Facebook page, through text messages. It just, it just can't be done. And so um, I, I, the, the, these live events and the things that you do um, to make Super Saturday um, a, a great experience truly does build your business and, and secures uh, the future of, of Beachbody in a very uh, unique way. And so we want to continue to, to, to make these better. And because we're in the people business and because people are weird, um, we have to make these things new and dynamic and, and evolve and draw, you know, figure out new ways to, you know, to get people out and to engage people. And, and as our business evolves, our, our, our events need to evolve. And so my hope with these calls, and, and we'll try it again, we'll, we commit uh, as, a, as a regional team to do these mastermind uh, calls with you market council members after every super Saturday so we can come back and kind of evaluate hey what went what went well or maybe something went um, wrong that you're like man this went wrong we didn't see it coming but now that, that it happened to us <laughs> I can share it with you so that it doesn't happen to you um, and so that's what we hope to do here all right Keyshawn did you have any you have any set the table things that you wanted to mention not right now no. okay you're good all right Robbie, you're just glad to be here. Okay. All right. Um, cool. I, what I would like to do then is start um, by, I've kinda, I, I kind of created like these little uh, awards for, um, for Super Saturdays for this, for this time around. And I'm going to ask a representative from these council members to speak. So getting a, an award it, that means nothing other than me, you know, kind of recognizing you with it. I haven't made a pick monkey for this. I'm sorry. Um, and I won't. Um, but it does mean that, that I'm going to kind of lead off with you guys to, to share some things. But I, I, I developed three categories for our, this last Super Saturday, um, you know, uh, event. And I, I did a top performer, 
a top performing uh, a thing I did. It's not, <laughs> that's funny, Alicia. Not official unless it's Pick Monkey. Didn't happen. Well, good. We don't make it <laughs> official then. A top performing uh, Super Saturday, most improved, and an emerging market. And so um, for this January event, I want to recognize our Washington, D.C. Market Council as our top performing uh, Super Saturday in the region. All right. They had uh, the blessing. Um, an opportunity <laughs> to have Carl at their uh, at their Super Saturday, which you might think is just awesome and fun and hunky dory. I guarantee you, they put in ten times work, more work, changing the agenda and mixing things around, and, and you know, taking on the curveballs that Carl inevitably throws at us. Jatana is now laughing like, yeah, I think Jatana got like two hours of sleep over a five day period up through that event. And then she hibernated for two days after Super Saturday and it was well deserved. But uh, way to go, DC. Um, you guys kicked butt. You represented uh, our region well. And Carl was over the top impressed with how that went. Okay. I don't know about the title of this. I need to work on the title, but I called it most improved, meaning that that their attendance was kind of here, and then they all, all of a sudden just took a huge step up, like like 250% uh, improvement on attendance, and absolutely knocked it out of the park. Uh, this this uh, this past week is our Atlanta Market Council. Atlanta, you guys, uh, absolutely. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> All right. They had 450 people were sitting like in the aisles. People were sitting on that's right. People were hanging from chandeliers. I heard um, they really um, put on an outstanding event and really paid attention to some really unique details that made it awesome uh, and got rave reviews from it. So way to go, Atlanta! Um, I also want to uh, recognize then one of our smaller Super Saturdays, brand new Market Council. It was their very first. Market Council Super Saturday um, is our Space Coast uh, Market Council. So um, who's on there from Space Coast? It was Laura and maybe there's some others. Jen Richardson can, couldn't yeah. be on uh, the call. She messaged me and let me know. But Space Coast, their very first thing. Space Coast is like on the coast east of Orlando pretty much, a little bit south. Um, first uh, time they did Super Saturday and that they sold the thing out completely sold out um, well before uh, you know the Saturday so congratulations to you guys as as an emerging market so anyway um, Jatana are you able to to come off of, of mute and um, again kind of taking this as, as a top performing having a huge uh, you know super Saturday there it also sold out um, you know obviously there were some dynamics of that having Carl and and Bonnie and, and Miguel and things, you guys had a, an amazing lineup uh, to work with. Um, but in terms of organizing a big event, what were some of the learning points that you guys took uh, from your experience uh, uh, with this last Super Saturday? Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you great. I'm actually at the hair salon and I'm standing outside with wet hair. So. <laughs> but, oh. Sorry. Um, so, you know, I can't, the, our team, honestly, it, it all comes down to how, how well, sorry, hopefully it's not too windy. Let me go back inside and the blow dryers are going. Um, it's honestly how well your market council can function. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep, yep, you, you're fine. Um, and honestly, our market council functions flawlessly and we all have a part. Um, we've got somebody who's super skilled at marketing and making videos and pictures and promoting. Um, you know, we have Greg Armfield, who's insanely awesome at working the tickets and doing all the tech, techie stuff. Um, Nikki and I love getting up in front and um, working the crowd and making sure it's fun and exciting. So just an amazing market council. And I think that is the key to running a huge event is functioning well as a bunch of leaders together. <laughs> Can be sometimes of a hot mess, but for us, it actually is flawless. Uh, Jatana, how, how do you guys, what type of, uh, speaking specifically of the mechanism you use to make assignments, talk us through um, how you make assignments for your people. You guys do a yeah, great job of making sure that promotion and marketing are taken care of, that registration is taken care of, um, that agenda is taken care of. Mm -hmm. How do you separate out those responsibilities uh, in terms of, uh, the you know mechanically how does that happen 
Yeah, I think we focus on everybody's skill set. I mean, everybody comes to the table with a strength. Um, I would never put myself in charge of running ticket sales and the, the technical side of things. So, I mean, I don't know if God's just blessed us, but everybody came with a different skill set. I mean, Michelle Hillier is like genius at making those videos and the pictures. So I think it's just sitting down together and identifying who's good at what. Everybody put, take off the leader hat for a second and humble yourself and be willing to serve where you're super talented. And thankfully, like I said, the 10 of us all come with amazing strengths and we bring our strengths to the table and it meshes really, really well. Awesome. Cool. Any, any specific learning points that you guys had where you're like, man, having 1200 people we learned this, you know, when, you know, when it gets that big, this is mm -hmm. what we wish we would have done differently. There's Michelle on here too now. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> well, you're speaking of the awesome marketing whiz over there. Yeah. Um, differently. I mean, our registration was flawless. Taria nailed it. Um, I was in charge of organizing volunteers. Thankfully, you know, Beachbody coaches are willing to serve pretty selflessly. So um, the coaches within the D.C. market have just said, tell me point, show me where to go. Um, I don't know. I mean, the biggest holdup that we had, I think, was because it was such a large event, we had a hard time controlling the VIP section and making sure that the people who purchased VIP had a designated seat. Um, we found teams that were trying to like still sit together, even though some had VIP and some didn't. Um, but we worked with it the best we could and tried to make sure everybody had a spot. We even pulled in 50 more chairs to add more seating. Cool. Michelle, how do you run the VIP, um, the, 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 the VIP seating? That's something that you guys do to try to get early registration, right? Michelle's like, wait, my kids are yelling. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah, no, what we do is we try to create a sense of urgency. So the first thing we do is let people know there are VIP tickets and how many VIP tickets we have. And we try to do that in the event throughout our marketing just to create that sense of urgency. So we'll post a flyer and we'll be like, tickets are going fast, make sure you secure your spot. And that's really regardless of how many tickets are selling, we kind of say that um, to get people to feel that sense of urgency, like, oh my gosh, I gotta save my spot, you know? So it's kind of a mixture of creating the urgency, providing value, letting them know what they're gonna find, and then at the event, really providing value so when they go to the event they say wow there's some real value provided here then when we talk about it the next time it, that's why it's built over time it's just a mixture of doing those two things back and forth um that just helps to draw a crowd and have people realize this is like a mini summit i'm gonna learn something here and i'm gonna be inspired awesome any other thoughts michelle that that you want to share with the group yeah, um, you know, you asked about things that could have gone better. One of them is we did not, and, it, and part of it was a time thing. We didn't hear back from the speaker, and that was frustrating. We're trying to figure out what to do with it. But we did not uh, check the slides and the way the video slipped in because we added video in. And it did create a glitch in the, the way that the, the program was running as far as the smoothness. So I would say always make sure you test everything. Get there early. Set it up. Next time we do something like that, we're going to test it ahead of time. You know, we've already talked about this. Um, but make sure you have everything tested and you have everything set. And like Tatiana said, we do have some amazing people on our team who can each handle different hats and we're all willing to work together. And it's just a matter of, um, you know, being friends and realizing we're not in competition. This is not a point where, I remember when I first joined the council, I was worried, well, my coaches, if I become friends with them, well, people could be coaches with me, end up signing up with them. I mean, I had all this stuff going on in my head. But when you're working together as a council and you see it as this is teamwork, this is a chance as leaders to shine, put down our pride, and really listen and see where can I help, what can I do, to um, to help this thing, this thing that's going to help all of our coaches and challengers and friends. Um, what can I do that's going to provide value? Awesome, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, and and maybe I can just mention. Um, I you know I heard a few. I had as my colleagues came back, you know, from Super Saturday and and 
and whatnot. And again, I don't know if it's rookie mistake or if it's just sometimes, you know, you get going and you forget and all of a sudden it's the morning of, but definitely um, in terms of, you know, you talked about streaming video. If you are going to stream video, including the corporate video, obviously we, you know, usually we, everyone shows the corporate video, please have that downloaded to the computer on the hard drive that you are going to use before the event. Um, do not try to stream the, the corporate video or any other video, whether it's YouTube or whatever. Um, it definitely will work better if you have those you know, videos downloaded to the hard drive of the computer that you're going to use. And then as Michelle said, test it out when you get there and make sure that's going. I mean, even I was using my computer and I had it downloaded. And when I plugged in the projector, guess what it did? It defaulted my audio to the projector instead of the speaker. I was on a Bluetooth speaker and it all of a sudden it overrode my Bluetooth speaker onto this stupid projector. And it took me you know, two minutes to figure out. That's really, that was two very awkward minutes. Um, had I checked that beforehand, that would have been, um, you know, uh, a good thing to do. So try to not depend on hotel or venue uh, wireless internet connections because they are extremely slow. And so trying to download video or stream video using um, the hotel internet connections is not a good idea. Make sure that, you know, that you've got the, Figured, got your video streaming figured out. Okay, um, Peyton, can I turn some time over to you? What were some learning points that you had? How did you take Atlanta from, um, you know, a, a, a Super Saturday? It was, you know, you guys were a brand new council. It's like, you know, two Super Saturdays ago, and you know, got some solid attendance in the past. You know, two hundred ish to all the way up to you know four hundred and fifty. Yeah. Um, can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you great. Okay. Um, so, honestly, it was really marketing and making sure that we put ourselves out there a lot. Um, we have, I don't know however many other areas do this, but we have a Georgia Coaches Facebook page. Um, so, we did a lot of marketing through that. Um, we started a like page that's specific to the market council. I know DC does that too. Um, and that was able to, you know, we were able to reach more people that way. Um, utilizing corporate to be able to email our region really helped because we were able to reach more people. Um, our issue in Atlanta is more about, Atlanta is not really centrally located in the state. Um, so people, and for a long time, our market wasn't worth traveling for. Um, our events weren't worth coming from Savannah, which is four hours away. So um, we really had to prove ourselves in the end of 2015 that we were worth coming for. And so I feel like because we, we put it, you know, our events at a, at a new level at the end of 2015, um, people were naturally wanting to come in 2016. Uh, we weren't expecting <laughs> to sell out like we did. Um, that was a surprise <laughs> and that was probably, I would say the worst criticism of our event because our event space held a hundred or 425 and we were well over 450. So <laughs> love, love those problems. Yes. Yeah, when, you get, when you get those problems, that those are the good problems to have. So how, how far out did you start to market and then specifically what did you put out there to market your event that drove the, the biggest spikes in registration? And maybe was there something that you put out there that when you did it, all of a sudden you saw a spike in registration, whereas maybe something else didn't? Yeah, I would say guest speakers are probably our biggest leverage, um, making sure that you have a good lineup. Um, what we sent out a survey after our event to kind of gauge what people thought of the event. Um, and one of the biggest responses was, I guess criticism wise, they were kind of comparing this to a summit type event because they saw, okay, well, cause we had Megan Eagleton, who's the number three coach. So they were like, cool. So we have top 10 coach training, you know, and so this should be like summit. And so we're kind of having to figure out um, how to differentiate the, the difference between what summit looks like and what super Saturday should be. But um, having a great lineup really drove sales um, for people to sign up. The other thing was um, you guys being able to send us the cafe latte shakeology. That was a huge driving point too. Okay. Okay. Um, 
And how far out were you, how far before the event did you really start to hit the promotion? We are literally like an event's over. We typically take a week or two off and then we hit the ground running for the next one. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, who has got now what's been met obviously for DC for uh, Atlanta, you know, they were able to draw some top 10 coaches, which is, you know, is, is huge and, and, you know, can draw some big audiences. I don't want the smaller councils on here to feel like, okay, well, I guess what we have to do is we have to somehow attract a top 10 coach and we have to have, you know, Carl Deichler come to our event because that's just not, it's not realistic to be able to, you know, to always be able to do that. Um, hopefully again, with time, it, you know, sometime or sooner or later it can work out. Um, but you also have to be able to, you know, to grow into that and also be able to, you know, to host a, a worthwhile and a, and a content rich, a content, um, you know, value event, even if you don't have um, maybe a headline speaker. Um, so, for example, uh, you know, Space Coast, I don't think that, you know, they had no, you know, headline speaker. It was, it, it was a, a brand new thing for them. How did you guys go about, you know, selling out your event, um, you know, and having such a great response, um, even though it was the first event with really no headline speaker? Um, well, I mean, I think Jen Richardson really draws a crowd, um, you know, herself, but we certainly didn't like bill her as a headline speaker, um, but we offered a social media panel. So all of the market council members, we posted in our Space Coast like um, event page and in a Space Coast Beachbody coach group and we asked what were their top questions about working a successful social media business on Facebook and Instagram and so they came back with a ton of questions and we kind of organized the questions and distributed them among the market council um, and then we just did a panel and we all kind of spoke for five or ten minutes um, and then we also, you know, promoted that we were going to be offering um, like a financial success story and a physical success story. So I think those points of inspiration for people are, is something they're just like little boosts that keep them going until, you know, summit and just allows them to kind of reconnect with the like the people in the 3D world part of the business. Um, and then we also offered um, child care. Uh, which was huge. Um, I know. Oh. <laughs> Hot button <laughs> issue. <laughs> um, in the past, I haven't been able to go to like a market council. I mean, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to go to a super Saturday because, you know, I had my kids and I couldn't bring them. So their parents could still see them. And, you know, they were like right next to us, but there was a, like a paid babysitter just kind of hanging out, watching them. They were just coloring and like playing with Play-Doh and that kind of stuff. Um, so the parents were still involved, but it was like there was, you know, supervised activities for them. Um, so I think that, um, and also we offered like a, a Shakeology bar and like a snack bar. Mm -hmm. um, and that was pretty popular. Cool. You know what I think, I loved what you said at, at, at first though, which I think is, is where I think we can take value, um, you know, as we, as we consider ways to promote, um, is you, you promoted the content, you promoted the value that people were going to get by attending because you didn't just say, Hey, come to the, come to the super Saturday. It's going to be fun. Jen Richardson's going to be there. It was like, come to the super Saturday because we are going to, to train you on best practices. There's going to be a social media boot camp. We're going to be sharing tips on how you can improve your business. You got really specific with uh, the value that someone would get by attending uh, the Super Saturday meeting. And I think that's a good learning point um, for everyone, especially the kind of the emerging markets, the emerging Super Saturdays. Yeah, you're not always going to be able to depend on a, on a, just a name, you know, a name speaker to come to your event. And that's where uh, as council members, you have to collaborate on, okay, what are we going to put on? What is the, the value that we can offer to coaches if they come to our event um, from a content standpoint that would make them, uh, you know, want to do that. So yeah, I like that. Um, Amy, you guys had a killer event in Miami. You guys always have had killer events in Miami. Will you take us through a little bit um, where you get your most value add 
uh, you know, promotional points? Hmm. Um, we kind of do it gauging. I mean, we've gotten kind of not spoiled, I guess we've earned it a bit, but you know, we do get blessed a lot of times with corporate. Um, we do also draw a large enough crowd that we do, you know, oftentimes try and request the celebrity trainer, um, along with corporate, if not, but we kind of gauge each one depending upon if we have somebody coming in from out of town, um, you know, if we have a particular theme in mind this time, we really, um, you know, we had Amy Silverman there. So Michael Neiman came and Sagi was there. So it was awesome to be able to incorporate their speeches. Um, but for this one, since it was the beginning of the year, we really focused on, you know, New Year's goals and not resolutions necessarily because Sagi abolished the idea of resolutions. Um, but really just, you know, Paulina did a really great job as far as, um, we, we shifted our market council this year. We rotated um, quite a, we rotated in and out seven new members. So that was really cool. And when we did that, we were able to really assign, um, like I think Jitana was saying, people into the, um, you know, list of or areas where they were, you know, most fluent or talented or, you know, that type of thing. So Paulina and Fran had done the creativity side. So they actually had, these beautiful, um, do you have it there, Paulina? Yeah, she did, ours was a black and white theme, so they did, we had these little postcards with my 2016 goals, and on the back side, you know, it gave them a little calendar, so, and then space on the other side, I don't know if you guys can see Paulina holding it up right now, but um, on the other side, there was a list, so they could list out their goals for the year, and that's just kind of, you know, helping, hopefully, you know, lots of people already have these things by the time that they're coming, but for those who didn't, or even, you know, for those who had them, but maybe hadn't written them down, this was a fun way to kind of really help them focus in, give them that little calendar, find a by when date, and, you know, give them ideas about setting their goals for the year and that type of thing. Um, so that was kind of the theme of this one. and you know, we kind of shift themes and what we're going to focus on each one, depending on whichever guests we have in town, or maybe if it's, you know, the theme of what's going on in Beach Body World as far as, you know, success club trips or this or that. So we kind of just vary depending on that particular event. But this one was more on goals and that was really fun. Great. Thank you. Um, Let's. I want to go. I want to throw out a question and go for like five more minutes on it, and then do like five minutes of maybe just some Q and A, and 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 we'll wrap this up. So just kind of set the table for how much longer we'll be on here, and I don't want to make these too long, or else you'll never want to join again. So we'll 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 keep it snappy. But um, one of the great uh, things that Super Saturdays can also do for your beach body business is it's an opportunity to, prom to promote yourself to promote that you're at something you're taking pictures you're it's a, it's an advertisement that you are at the event or what you did at the event I mean it's there's there's a, a huge amount of value that can go into um, the way that you promote yourself at the event and so I'd like to hear from someone in this I don't have any you know names to call on this but how have, have you guys or how have you seen it work where um, being at the event there was um, there was something there that facilitated, you know, pictures being taken or a way for you, for coaches to get in and really promote themselves or to promote the fact that they were at Super Saturday in such a way that if you were an outsider looking in and seeing what, you know, the fun that my friend was having at this Super Saturday event, like, I want to be part of that. Does that, does that make sense? I don't have that very well described. I hope I've described it well. Michelle, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, um, actually, that's something that we've kind of worked on. And there's a few things that we've done. One thing is we did uh, an Instagram contest. So we'd have people try to take a fun pick or an something that'd be a different pick that could win. Uh, and we tell them to hashtag DCSS. So it's a way to get them posting, especially on Instagram. Um, their pictures and, and doing something fun and doing something different. We also, uh, Greg went and ordered a backdrop, like, you know, like they have at the fashion things or whatever that has like DC, um, the DC Super Saturday logo on it. And people can take their team pictures in front of that and people do a lot of that. 
And this last time, um, Taria had suggested, and it really turned out, was really awesome, you know, but you do have to have some funds to do it, but we got a photo booth. And people just loved the photo booth. So they're going in there with their coaches, with their family, whoever they had there, and it was a lot of fun. But um, it gives them something to talk about, you know, and, and when we do have guest speakers and there are people that want, people want to have a picture with, we'll often have a line so that they can get their pictures taken. So that's what we did with Autumn and Carl. We gave people an option to go through a line to get their picture taken with them, and, and uh, they had it set up. I mean, Jatana and, and Annie Pagero and, and the council members had it all set up so it went smoothly. So it was pre-thought out and uh, went great. Awesome, thank you. Lara, did you, you have your hand raised. I appreciate, like, you must be, a, like, come from a school teacher, like, raise my hand, like, a, I, I, don't, I don't even know Zoom, you could, like, raise your hand up. That was, you know you can raise your hand on Zoom, and Laura did, so she's next. <laughs> uh, we did Pio on the beach, which was something that. Hey, say that one more time, it got fuzzy. Uh, we did Pio on the beach. Oh, well, hey, that's going to work well for those in Charlotte. I mean, I don't just teasing. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that obviously a Florida Market Council, that was like, you know, a big draw. Um, so people really shared that a lot. And then as a new Market Council, we obviously didn't have the money for a, for a photo booth, but we um, like made one. So we got a backdrop and we did like a New Year's theme. So we had like, you know, the cute little like, with their little props on the end and so it was nice because people took pictures with their team stuff but then they were also taking cute pictures with their kids and sharing that and I thought that was a nice way to kind of weave in the family aspect of the business. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's what we did. Great, thank you Laura. Uh, Peyton, you raised your hand. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, we also have, we ordered the step and repeat which is kind of the, the banner that what DC was talking about. Um, and that was a huge deal to all of our attendees because we also hire a professional photographer to be there for the event. So can you guys hear me? Cause I feel like yes. you guys are frozen. Yep. Okay. Um, so we also have a photographer there. Um, and she's really awesome because we, we have cameras going and stuff too, but, um, she will put together video and stuff for us too to kind of recap the event. But, um, so people can, take their pictures and we also got those Instagram um I don't know what you would call them I guess they're like poster boards <laughs> so they look like you on a poster board like for an Instagram thing and it's customizable with like our Atlanta information yeah. on it so it's, it's that was, it that was super cool will you post a picture of that on, on this yeah. Event page yeah yep then, so those are just I mean that's just one of the things that we did but the having the step and repeat like was a whole new level and we this was the first event that we had it at great thank you so much uh, April Hi. Hello, Hi. April. I know you're driving so stay focused but you have <laughs> well thank you Carly messaged me and she's like, are you on this call? And I was like, oh my gosh, no. But I, I so I, I jumped on like 20 minutes late. Um, I forgot. But yeah, I'm driving home. It's my birthday. So I'm going home to Pittsburgh. Um, but yeah, we do the intro. Yay, thank you. Um, and so I actually won a contest. I won a photo booth bus from my photographer. Um, and so we had that just right outside. That was really fun. They loved that, like got prints. Um, and then we did an um, NFL theme. So we took pictures um, with it. Um, somebody brought like a huge, or Todd brought a huge like six foot like Panthers blow up thing that we took pictures in front of and um, did like the like um, uh, Panthers kind of uh, pictures and things like that. So it was really cool to have that theme that everybody kind of, you know, was already kind of in that team mindset. And then the other thing is we had everybody use hashtag Charlotte Super Saturday when they posted their pictures. So we could also, um, you know, have those later. And I had, I put a photo album. We just have an ongoing group page for Super Saturday for all events. And I started a photo album for them to throw it in there. Um, and I, we didn't really touch on it so much this time, but we really always like say like, this is why, like take this and make it seem like it's, you know, 
a big freaking party, invite people. And we, you know, kind of said, like, if we do want to get big name people, people here, we have to have, um, you know, a ton of people. So get the word out. Talk about how much fun you had. Bring seven friends next time. And, um, you know, why not get them here with this awesome, fun environment with free prizes and things like that. And that's how, you know, people decide that they want to be a coach and be a part of that. So, yeah, we, we really tried to um, make the theme non-negotiable, you know, whatever we decide, because we do a separate prize and drawing always for somebody that participates in the theme, because I don't want to just be like, oh, you know, costume contest, two people dressed up. So we always, you know, we're really big with raffles and things. So we did a, um, uh, last time we, for Halloween, we did a three-day refresh contest um, with anybody that dressed up. So then there was a ton of like costume pictures and, and things like that. So. But yeah, I think I think that the the Instagram um, you know cutouts and backdrops that's a great idea, and I, I think I'm going to do some Instagram training next time. So I, I I loved what you said about you know having a contest for people that use that hashtag and things on Instagram. That was a great idea. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, well hey, let's uh, let's do we'll we'll end this with five minutes Keyshawn do you have a point I do have something okay to say. Keyshawn's got a thing that will end with hey five minutes of Q&A so um in addition to being able to promote um yourselves at these events and having your team being able to promote the fact that they're at this really cool event I think that uh, uh an objective of Super Saturdays in these events is also to bring people back and a great way that we can bring people back is through the culture so just taking this one step further um there are some really cool things culture-wise going on um, in the Southeast region. I'm just going to name a few and then I would love to open up the floor to anything that you um, and your Super Saturday may be doing uh, that's different that drives people to want to come back to these events over and over and over again, um, giving them the opportunity and ability to fall in love with Team Beachbody and our culture and what we're all about. Um, so some of the things that I've seen um, team shout outs. This was in DC where they literally shouted out every team that was represented that day. Um, Atlanta, I would love to, to have you guys post this in the event page, but your iMovie, the, the build up to 2016 and all your speakers that you have coming uh, in 2016. Oh my goodness, I've heard so many amazing things about what that video did and how uh, it excited people to want to come back. Um, events tag, um, you, I hear a lot of people using hashtags for their events. Well, there's an actual website, eventstag.com, where you can split screen, and as you use that hashtag, it comes up. So you have uh, everyone who's using that hashtag at that moment, whatever they say, whatever picture they post, it comes up in real time. Um, a personal development table, uh, success wall, not just showing before and after pictures, uh, but showing uh, people shredding their mortgages, uh, showing uh, the Three Lives Club and people becoming success club legends and all stars, um, humane projects, and, and really giving back to the community, doing um, 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 uh, Habitat for Humanity and, and projects like that. Um, uh, having an, uh, st a starting lineup type of theme to introduce the market council, uh, having a fun mix and mingle at the beginning. Um, I can go on and on, but I would love to open up the floor to anything that may be different um, that your market council is doing culture wise to bring people back and to have people fall in love with Team Beachbody. Keyshawn? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to jump in. I had my hand up, but I don't know what screen you guys are on. So I just want to say that I've been going to the Miami Market Council Super Saturdays since August of 2013, and they have always done an amazing job. So this year, getting to be a part of um, all the events and everything, like they've obviously done a great job of creating that comeback, creating that um, – that atmosphere that people want to be a part of and not just diesel nation, right? Cause we're Miami and we know that Becky and, and Amy and, and Christina like own Miami, but the, but like everybody that's there, like we infuse it with, you know, all these different team cultures and, and people that come together to make it this great event. So like, you know, 
you have these amazing leaders running these events who have, you know, friends in the business that come and join us, which creates that, like, I know Super Saturday in Miami is always going to be awesome. So people will drive from Orlando. People drive. I mean, I'm so happy the Space Coast had one because my girls, I have like five people there. So they got to go. So like, I feel like when you have the guest speakers, when you have the step and repeats, when you have the samples of things that people can't get their hands on, like people were dying that we had Shakeology Latte and they didn't get it. We were like, I set up a whole area where people could take selfies and the bags were like, I was having to like police the bags. I was scared. Somebody was going to like run away with a bag, but like everybody loved that. And I, you know, cute straws we put out and the blenders. I mean, we got some great picks, but like, there's always something to be said about Miami super Saturdays and I have nothing to do with it because not only did the first one, but there's always somebody coming. There's always something interesting going on. And even when there's no corporate people there and there's nobody like, other than really the Miami market council and the people in Miami who make it a great event that are there, like people come and that's what you need. You need it to be hit or miss whether there's corporate there or not. Like, and Miami's created that. And I think they've done that by having such like, I mean, it's my, you know, Christina and Becky have done a wonderful job at it, but I am, uh, I know that Moving forward in the future, people who come to Miami Super Saturdays, they know what they can expect, and it's always something great. And when you create that consistency in the event, people are going to keep coming back. So I think that the consistent factor, and every time you have an event, like you know that people are going to be recognized. You know that um, if, if, like for me, before I was in the market council, if I hit some rank or I hit the milestone, I was like, Ooh, super Saturday. Like, I know that we're going to get to stand up and my team is going to get to get, you know, shout outs there. Like those kinds of things that the little things are what pe keep people coming back and the consistency. So I just want to shout out Miami cause it was my first time. And <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> right. Thanks, Dara. Anyone else? Okay. Do you want to? All do right. Something? Well, great. I think what I think the, the great point that Keyshawn made is just that the, the little thing, the culture piece that makes people feel connected, makes me feel like that was a fun experience. I want to go back. I want to bring people with me next time. And again, um, it's, you're not always going to have a keynote speaker that, that is, you know, that is headline or whatever. You may not always have, you know, uh, the brand new release of Shakeology, you know, at your event. But I think if, if we take the time to get creative about what is going on in Beachbody at the time and how can we make this unique, how can we find a twist to just make this a great experience, a unique experience, and then promote the heck out of it and then make sure that, that when people are there that they're experiencing that, that they're, you know, that they're being recognized for, for accomplishments they've done, that they'll be there and they'll come back. So. Anyway, um, we've kind of outdone our time. In the interest of time, I think um, I will forego any additional question and answer. If you do have questions, though, that you're like, oh, hey, I wish we would have talked about that, post them. Um, go to the, the event page where I created this event, and we can you know, leave your questions or get a thread of comments going on, and, and we can use that. Uh, for the time being to maybe do some some Q&A or to address issues that you'd want to have further information on. Or maybe we do a follow-up call in, you know, maybe a month out from next Super Saturday. If this was well-received and we want to do it, we can find ways to, you know, to get back uh, together and, and keep this going. So um, I just want to thank you guys for taking time out of your day to be here and, and for sharing, for being willing to share, for wanting to get better and wanting to make uh, your Super Saturday is better and, and your market council is better. Again, thank you so much uh, for our part. We sincerely appreciate uh, what you do. And so um, thank you. And uh, hey, on to April, right? So we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right, we'll see you. See you guys. All right, take care, y'all.